and welcome to another Wolf Time Gaming video. Today I'm going to be unboxing Star Wars Armada's Rebel Fighter Squadrons 2. It's a great expansion that I've been looking forward to getting my hands on for quite some time now. There's lots of cool ships in there, especially the Ghost, which uh, of course is from Star Wars Rebels, and a few others like the um, Headhunters and things that I've been really looking forward to getting my hands on. Before we go any further though and open up the packaging, let's get the kettle on. Okay, let's take a look inside the packaging. I've already opened it up again as usual, just so you don't have to watch me fight with the scissors. Let's have a look. I've got the cards and the dials to start with. A little bit difficult to get them out. There we go. Standard packaging, really. Let's have a look if there's any extra rules in here. Yeah, the only only extra rule, as we've seen with the other ones, really, is the ir irregular squadrons, where some squadrons um, don't have three models, they have a single plastic fighter but essentially they act exactly the same as other squadrons you've had in the core set and things like that so there's no difference really get the actual, uh, actual models out, move the packaging out of the way get rid of the boring bit really I say boring bit, the artwork on this is pretty fantastic I love the ghost on the front there Let's have a look what we've got So all the standard sort of dials, really, uh, sorry, stands, no, no change to any of them. Um, got the different patterns for the multi-fighters, multi I think you've got some E-wings, you've got the Z95s in these as well, which will sit on the um, like multi-stands, and then you've got uh, the other vessels here. Straight away I've gone for Ghost, of course, because it's one of my favourite vessels, but I mean, you look at the amount of detail on there, it's going to be really easy to paint up as well. You've got lots of nice um, recesses and things, lots of nice detail on that for all the oils and things to drop into. Um, if you haven't already seen the painting videos I've done previously uh, in for Star Wars Armada, make sure you do check them out. Um, make sure you subscribe as well, just so you can see the future painting videos, because I'm definitely getting some paint on all of these uh, to make it give that full immersive feeling on the tabletop. I can't stand it when they're, they're just this plain plastic. Uh, it feels too board gamey for me. So we'll look what we've got in here. It's got the standard sort of dials and things. I say standard dials are a little bit different because of the obviously different vessels that we're actually working with with these. And then you've got the cards themselves for the the ships. So you've got the Z95 Headhunter Squadron, which are basically uh, they look like an X-wing, uh, but they're not X-wings. It's just a fixed wing. Um, you don't you don't actually open up. Um, you've got uh, Lieutenant Blount, uh, Z95 Headhunter Squadron, or Lieutenant if you're American. Uh, you've got the E-Wings. E-Wings are... I'm, I'm not really keen on, on the E-Wings. I don't really like how, how they look uh, compared to all the other vessels of the fighter squadrons, but they're pretty cool. Uh, I'll definitely be playing with them. You've got Corrin Horn, who's your named uh, character for your E-Wing Squadron. You've got the VXX-100 uh, Freighter um, and Hera Sandula with the Ghost, of course. Um, so you've got like, Captain Sandula, who's General Sandula when we get to Rogue One. If you haven't heard, there's a, a few little Easter eggs in the background in Rogue One where you'll actually hear a, a General Sandula actually um, mentioned over the tunnel and called, which is pretty cool. You know she's still around as well during the Rogue One era, uh, which is great because that's uh, the sort of era I like the just before the rebellion so when everything's setting up and that's what I've gone for with the profundity and things like that and then you've got the Lance, Lancer class pursuit craft uh, and Casey Nonya the shadow caster uh, another one uh, out of rebels um, I think she's uh, an old friend of Sabine Wren's if I remember correctly so I'll definitely be getting this painted up uh, like, like in the actual pro TV series um, there's a few different options because we've got two of the uh, the ghost model. Uh, essentially, I'm not going to be painting them both to get uh, the same. 
And the same with the uh, Lancer Class Pursuit Craft as well, because there's essentially two of the same models with that as well. So we'll probably do a little bit of variation. If you've got any ideas of how, how, uh, how they could be painted, make sure you uh, stick it in down below in the comments and uh, I'll see what we can do. Uh, I'll get them all put together anyway and I'll come back. Okay, so that's them all on the stands now. They're all looking really, really good. There's so much detail in these. Um, even with the smaller fighters, the headhunters and the uh, E-Wings, there's loads and loads of detail. I love the ghost model. You can even see there's the Phantom on the back there, which is pretty awesome. And of course, yeah, you've got the Shadow Caster as well. Loads of detail on the Shadow Caster too. You can get some really interesting paint schemes on these. I'm uh, really looking forward to getting them on the table as well. There's some really nice artwork in the actual cards as well. Um, the ship's looking absolutely fantastic. And one of the good things is that essentially, if you're not sure, see so you've got Harrison Doolis card and the, the base actually matches as well. If you're a little bit unsure of the uh, who goes with who uh, when you're on, you've got them actually on the tabletop. One of the main problems with this, um, as I spoke about when we looked at the um, Imperial um, Fighter Squadrons 2, is that when you come to the name characters, you've only got one name character and one standard uh, like fighter squadron card, which means you really do have to take the name character if you want to take both vessels, which I always do. I always like to have a name character, but if you didn't want to do that and you want to add two of the standard sort of um, squadrons on the table, so that can be quite difficult because you're not sure about who is connected to which like defensive um, defensive stuff really when you've got the little defensive bits uh, just on the card. You're not going to be able to tell which is which easily. They can run them out both off one card. It, it's it's really talking to your opponent and making sure they're okay with that. So there we have it. It's all set up and ready to go and ready for, to play on the tabletop now. I more than likely will be painting these up though before we actually get a game in with them because I can't wait to get some actual paint on them. But thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.